We have everyone. All right. Oh, by the way. Okay. But not too bad. I'll give a quick. I'll give a very quick decision. I think that uh, I vote negative. I think that the best comparison being, and I say best with air quotes, best comparison being done on how I should evaluate the round is coming out of the negative. And the question that you're saying I should evaluate extinction first, but a, you're not like as he's getting it. You're not giving me why extinction first. B, you're not telling. You're not answering back any of their claims that all of your extinction scenarios come in a securitizing mentality, which are probably mean that they're constructed and that I should probably reject them in terms of their arguments to to an arc. Um, I have more to say, but email me. <laughs> <laughs> um, since we just gave, stop giving me the death stare out. Um, uh, pretty much what you said, but I was going to go a little bit. I thought we had more time than that. Uh, uh, so, since I'm giving you the warming impacts, I don't think you're doing a good enough job with this NASA evidence. It's just like, well, at worst, even if right, it's warming Israel, you should give them a long time frame on this. And you don't have an explanation for why. Like warm, you have like this ice cap stuff right into AR, but you're not explaining to me why the ice caps are going to melt quickly and why it's going to go all to hell. Right? So then that means that I kind of have you with only the permutation and the risk that reform right, is good. But I think this Murray evidence gets you into trouble. And I don't, but I don't think they're pointing it out that the evidence is that actual threats have to be taken care of before we can have reform. But you're not winning that any actual threats are happening. Or if the one threat that I think that you're winning that is warming, that is going to happen in such a short time frame that right, I have to forego any questions I might still have about the legitimacy of the plan. Um, the, there's a couple of links I think you're not dealing with. The terror talk link, I don't think, you're, the 2 ar you're just like, this is just defense, we're not going for it. The problem is that this is a reps link to the way in which your discourse produces threats and from the 1EC. But I, you're not dealing with the argument, right, that says that this binary, this like overarching like theme, this narrative of like good and bad, like this other that we have to go destroy is part of this threat construction. And the fact that the 2AR is just like, this is just defense, we're not going for this, you know, we know we said nuclear terrorism and like extinction, but it's just not important right now, right? It gives me more pause about like, are the threats real? I think y'all could do a better job of pointing this out, but the card that I call from them is kind of an epistemology like argument that says that thought produces fear unless we take a moment to be insecure, which I think is what the alternative is. Uh, and given that I don't really think that your threats are real, and if they are real, I don't think that they're happening right in the way that you say they are, that probably says that all of your impacts are just threat constructions that reproduce more construction and leaves at this endless state of violence. So given that there's no value to life in like a securitized, right, affirmative apparatus, I think it's better to question why I would act in the first place. I don't think the permutation can resolve that because I don't think you get out of the permutation cannot sever the representations of your one AC or even like the just performative things that just 
where the debate gets bigger and there's more impacts and more impacts as the debate goes on, I think that you're just feeding the link scenario that they're talking about. They're not doing their best job of like laying out as the debate progresses how you have increased right the magnitude of your impacts and how frequently they come. But I do think that they're doing a good enough job like when it's epistemology argument, right, that getting at why your impacts are happening is probably is better to question why you have reduced them in the first place because they don't seem to be real. Yeah, I agree with pretty much all of that. Um, I think that um, stylistically first, I would say that you need to stop just overbearing with your partner. Like you cannot be over her shoulder during the one and R, and you can't. I mean, during the one and R, and you can't like cross examination answer every question without ever giving her an opportunity. And you need to tell him, "Yeah, I could do this," because everything that you say is correct and the arguments that you should be giving when you do take those opportunities. So don't let him push you around. He's not a better debater than you. You are perfectly capable. So, you know, make sure you find room for your own voices. So that's a stylistic thing, um, which would hurt your speaker points if this was a prelim round. Uh, beyond that, though, I think that uh, the link to terror talk has become very clear when you're like, well, we will detain all the people who are associated with the Taliban when the Taliban, as they say, is a political organization. Uh, and not a terrorist group, and they're drawing distinctions between things, whereas you're just sort of conflating all of them as terrorists, and not everyone with the Taliban. The Hussein card that you say is where they do the demonization actually explicitly says that America is beginning to work with them because they no longer view them as terrorists, which would probably mean that you would release them, but in cross-examination, you're indignant that those people will stay detained, that they will be detained, and that's all there is to it, which means that you create a situation where you construct a threat of terrorists who are all these people who you then, you know, are willing to keep in detention, and on the terror talk argument on the uh, case debate, they say that that's going to create a self-fulfilling prophecy, and it means that it's going to fail, and on the criticism proper, they have the arguments uh, that Elijah's pointed to about, like, how the way that discourse becomes before policy making, ontology comes before policy making, so there's all these reasons for why the plan is not the question, but the language that you utilize to couch the plan is the question of in this debate round. There's no defense of your language. There's only a defense about your plan doing something as being good, and you don't really defend anything about language or make arguments about how you know, we have to evaluate uh, consequences over discourse or that there's a distinction between discourse or consequences. So even if you have like extinction comes first, extinction comes first, they have arguments about how discourse will then shape the way that policy makes and language is going to come before that. So, it does, so you don't get access to extinction if your representations such as terrorist threats and things like that uh, end up being co-opted and sort of doing the opposite uh, a, as you want. I think that um, I think that the two NR could be clearer uh, doing some of these things, and I think that as soon as they start saying that we will keep them detained, you know, to me, I would kick out of the dis ad in the block and be like, this is our link very clearly where they will detain people who are otherwise innocent. And I think that, uh, that there is a little bit of truth when you start saying, well, the Taliban is hu horrible human rights abusers, but you are saying it's just a faulty mechanism of government. It's not that these people now need to be destroyed. So I see a distinction there. Um, but I think that once you got the link for the K, then it would just go for the K and the terror talk stuff and get rid of sort of that disad okay. uh, portion of it. I should have said, like, I wanted to just talk about the disad to make that differentiation and not be vulnerable to their, like, do you link it to the K? I think I was trying to not go for the disad, I mean, but I need to say that works because they would do that. Well, in the 2NR, you weren't going for the dissent, but in the, yeah, in the, in the yeah, block, yeah, you were going yeah, for the dissent. Yeah, I'm yeah, saying you should have yeah, kicked out in the block, the block and just okay. gone and then spent okay. that time okay. on so that the dissent. I also think you should have kicked out a T in the block. I think that it was okay. not going to get any of us, and I think that your articulation of it is just not true for sure. what their AF does anyhow. So that time better spent on the critical arguments, applying sure. links and things like that, I would have I would have preferred a lot, seeing. Wise. Um, just so you, uh, I know if this happened, right, but the internal, like, reading, the internal, like, signposting uh, that you learn at OD, you should probably stop, because most judges in policy aren't going there. They'll probably hurt your spirit points. So we're just like, here's a, you read a turn, and then you're just like, this turn is the K, okay, right? It's not, it's not your job, but it's her job, right? The one of yours job is to explain your 2AC. Your 2AC is to get arguments out, right? This is the link debate. We have three turns for A, B, C, right? Not to, like, you can give some analysis, right? So when if I was to make a link turn, I would say do this turn, right? The link because, right? But you kind of, every after every card you read, you don't have to go back and right? re-explain. This is a turn, right? Because I know it's a turn, he knows it's a turn, they're going to answer it, right? 
um, it's just a different type of analysis, right? Because it's based for longer, you don't have to do as front load so much of that analysis, right? So your 2AC, you probably could have got about like four or five more cardio arguments out if you hadn't taken the time, right, to do like that, you know, even if, you know, this is a term because, right, you just label it turn, right, the link does this, or turn, this is and this is a disadd to the halt, right? It's a much easier, faster way because you have like another hour and a half to like expand all that analysis. So that's just stuff that can put you farther ahead. I think it's pretty good, like the way you do like the double binds. I, I do think that the link differential and the double bind goes for them. But I do think like the way you like position that in the 2AR will help you a lot. But two a, your, as a 2AC, your job is now to just like, out, you, you can outspread the block or go into it. Your job is not to analyze stuff for them. It's not to tell them what's going to happen. It's not to help them figure shit out. It's to be like, here's 45 cards, deal with it. Right? They're all responsive. They're all different. And here's, it sets you up for a 2 AR. You know that out of these 15 cards you read, only three of them are required to win the that they don't know that. That's why they get the block. It's just, they switch it from being like your one man team to just being two way. Let's be around, everybody. Congrats. Thank you.